Today, I'm jumping into two topics you didn't know you needed that are going to absolutely transform how you perform. The truth is, most coaches out there spend all the time talking mechanics, rotations, game sense, and they completely forget about these upcoming two topics that seriously affect performance results in competitive play. So today, we're covering a sleeper topic you probably didn't know you needed called vision. Also, if you're new here, my name's Luke, and I'm actually the founder of Rocket League's number one live coaching program called the Grand Champ Roadmap. Inside, we help plat through champ ranked players, maybe like you watching, rank up in just six weeks time. At the time I'm recording this, we have just 15 spots remaining. So if you want in before we close our doors, or you just want to learn how to rank up as fast as possible, DM me with the keyword 48 and we can talk details about how it works. Click the first link in the description to join my discord and message someone on my team below. Without any further ado, let's get started. Vision. More commonly referred to as field of vision, vision is a concept completely overlooked by most players in game. Vision is a catch-all term that captures all of the information you're receiving while you play at any given point in time. If you think of any of the great high hour players, if you watch their gameplay, you'll notice the way they look around the field is completely different than even semi-pro players. This is what pro vision means in Rocket League. In other games, where you look at any given time doesn't really affect things. Especially in shooters, if you're looking forward, you're seeing everything you need to see. In Rocket League though, where everything's 3D and fast moving, two players with the exact same mechanical kits can experience the game completely differently based on where they focus their vision. So with all that being said, why should you care about vision? Well, the truth is more vision almost always means more information. And the more information you have, the better decisions you can make in game. Now, just because you have the information, does it mean you'll make a good decision? No, you can make bad decisions with good vision and good decisions with bad vision. But on average, the people who understand the full picture with what's happening in their ranked lobbies will make better decisions on average. And that's what we're going for over the long term. I was first introduced to the topic of vision by a training pack creator and a pro coach named Way Protein. And I think his analogy for vision sums it up perfectly. Way says, having low vision is like having low boost. You can make a great play with low boost or low vision, but in most cases, you probably need to go back to refresh your vision when you run out. To make this more concrete, let's take a look at some examples on offense and defense. Example one, offense. This is a super common situation I see, especially at the lower ranks, that shows the extreme effects of vision. Lower ranked players often lose control and panic when the ball flies over their head in midfield or on offense. If you don't understand vision properly and you get into situations like this, what you see happen most often is players panic and feel rushed. Maybe there's reason to be rushed, maybe there's not, but when you have no vision, you don't know. Which is why you often see low ranked players panic when the ball goes over their head, jump, use boost, and even if they do get a touch, it's weak. In reality, if you pan out to a good vision player, usually the entire lobby can see your movement and the person with poor vision just looks silly compared to the rest of the match. In situations like this, it's incredibly important, especially at the lower ranks, to just reset your vision and move back just like we said with the boost analogy. Example two, let's talk defense. You're familiar with the idea of front post versus back post defense, and you understand why most coaches say front post is not the way to go. But let's look at this from a different perspective. Looking at this player, when they push up through the front post to challenge a ball in the corner, notice what happens to their vision. Just like on offense, when you move too close to the ball too soon, you risk losing vision of the play. When you push up front post, this often means losing sight of the midfield. A common pitfall that usually follows is when the ball is centered, the player finds it hard, if not impossible, to split up the play, read the ball, and accurately predict where the midfield attacker is going to challenge from. Yes, you can fix this with mechanics, but at its core, this is a vision issue. Now, I know 
These are a little bit extreme examples when it comes to vision. But hopefully seeing this happen in game is starting to rack your brain on where vision can actually seriously affect your results as a player. Now there are a million more situations to cover with vision. We could talk about when the ball flies over your head onto your backboard on defense. We could talk about when you're shadow defending and maybe your teammates attacking from the side, but you can't see them or a million other situations. But what's more important than breaking down each one here is just giving you an idea of what vision means. And hopefully this is a little bit of a launch pad for you to start thinking about vision. Bottom line, when you start to lose vision in your games, if you have time, you need to find a way to reset your vision, whether that's repositioning entirely or using ball cam or camera movements to temporarily boost your vision. We'll get into that more in just a second. Now that you understand field of vision, I want to focus in on a more advanced aspect called focusing your vision. The basic idea here is two players at separate ranks can look at the same situation and walk away with a different decision. Why? Because generally, people at the different ranks target their vision on different parts of the screen. Let me give you an example. At the lower ranks, most people's vision is isolated to one dimension, the ball. <laughs> As you increase through the ranks, you learn how to focus your vision quickly on more things at once. For example, you look at the ball, predict its path, then check where the opponents are, where your teammates are, and finally you come to some sort of decision as to whether or not to attack the ball. I'll talk more about how to train focusing or targeting your vision in just a second, but at base level, I want to give you an order of operations so you can work on scaling up your vision based on your level of game sense. So roughly speaking, my order of operations for vision looks something like this. First, I'll look at the ball. This is a very brief assessment where I'll check the ball, check its trajectory, and make a quick vision calculation based on where I think it will end up. Immediately, the next thing I look for is teammates or opponents near the play. This is the highest priority assessment because it'll determine whether I can actually make a play on this ball. Third, I'll check for secondary or third defenders that are near the play, but not directly attacking the ball. This can once again affect my decision. Then second to last, number four, I'll check the proximity to the net. This is gonna affect the sort of payoff matrix a challenge might create. And then the fifth and last thing I'll check for is boost pathing. As you'll see, this gets complicated quick because you have to be able to pan out from the most urgent play possible to, okay, even if I'm not challenging the ball, can I pick up boost? Can I rotate? Can I boost grab? How can I make impact on this play? This might feel a bit overwhelming, but ask yourself, on this order of operations, what level of analysis am I usually at? For a lot of people, this is just gonna be ball or opponent level. So if you're somebody who's only looking at the ball when deciding if you're challenging or only looking at the opposing first man, the next thing you wanna try to train is, okay, where are my teammates? Where's my closest teammate to the ball? Or maybe next you look at, where's the opposing second man? This is one of those things that you need to develop over time, but the most important thing is that you assess where you're at and work step-by-step step to level up your vision as you climb through the ranks. We'll talk about more steps to practice in just a second here, but hopefully that framework makes you at least feel a bit more comfortable with the long-term track of how to improve your vision. All right, finally, moving on to the last section, how to actually practice. A thought exercise I like to ask is how do you look up in Rocket League? No, seriously. How do, how do you look up? Like what's the, what's, what's the controller input to look up in the game? Funnily enough, when I ask people, even at the GC level, half the people I talk to have to check their controller and think, how would I look up? And then the other half just have no clue. So I say this not to berate you, but just to emphasize how few people have thought about vision before. When it comes to practicing vision, I recommend starting at base level. Jump into free play, hit the ball around, and if you never have before, actually move your camera around. Try to look up, try to look down. Use reverse cam. See what happens when you swivel down and right or up and left. The truth is most people even up to the GC ranks, have no clue how to move their camera. The next thing I recommend is incorporating ball movement. Just practice hitting the ball around in free play, and the moment the ball goes over your head or you get into an awkward situation, practice rotating wide and specifically using ball cam to reset your vision. Toggle it off, toggle it back on, and notice how it affects your vision in different parts of the field 
whether that's near the wall, in the corners, under the net, or at midfield. This isn't something that I can just give you a single drill to practice, because once again, it's a very layered topic. But if you never have, I'm serious, go into free play and just practice using your camera, because this is a part of the game that literally nobody talks about. Then, when you get in a situation in-game and you feel awkward, try to bookmark it. My guess is if you go watch a pro play, especially somebody like a Squishy or a Garrett G, and you just pay attention to their movement, you'll be amazed at how frequently they use their camera to regain vision even in the most awkward situations. Improving your vision is definitely one of those things where watching higher level gameplay is going to drastically accelerate your improvement. So give players like Garrett G, Squishy a look, make a conscious effort to overemphasize this in your games, and you'll be surprised at how much easier Rocket League becomes. Finally, for closing notes, I want to talk about actual play style. So I know I've given you a lot of information about how vision might affect your gameplay, but to boil it down and to actually give you something to work on, I want to talk about how to incorporate vision into your play style. Generally, this really just means one thing. If and when you do find yourself in a low vision situation in game, I want you to make a conscious effort to drop back, back out, and reset your vision just like you would your boost. This means waiting at midfield, maybe longer than you think you should on offense, taking really wide rotations as you're rotating back from first man, and really, really sticking back post for as long as you can in your ranked games. I know vision isn't something flashy, but it is something really impactful, especially when players start to get tilted. Usually the first chain that breaks is vision. And when you lose vision, all the information that we've taught you goes out the window. So yes, vision isn't flashy, but it is something that's really impactful, especially over the long term. How quickly you can develop your own vision is going to be the difference between it taking you 2,000 more hours to hit GC or just 200. Anyways, that's my bit done on vision. I'm really passionate about this topic, so <laughs> hopefully I didn't bore you too much. Seriously, try to implement this as much as you can in-game, and I promise it's going to make a difference. Catch you soon. Peace, guys.